and welcome back to Life Group. I'm so glad that you're continuing this journey to challenge yourself to take those steps of faith and to live the life that God has designed you to live. And as we continue on in this study, let's be reminded of the first two sessions. In the first session, we were reminded of the great commandment, and that's to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Or a different way to say it is to love where you live. And the thing is, what the authors challenged us with was not to think of that like, oh, I'm just going to love everybody, but to actually love your literal neighbor, the people on the side of you, in front of you, behind you, or for our rural partners here, to love the people that you interact with on a consistent basis, to actually learn their names, to hear their story, to encourage them, etc. In our second session, we talked about the different obstacles that can keep us from loving our neighbor, which included time and also fear. So I hope that you've had some great discussions about that as you opened up and were honest. And hopefully you were checked on this week to say, hey, how am I actually doing? Because every single step of faith, oh, let me tell you, is an act of worship unto God. And God is so pleased with that simple step of faith. But let's go into this session right here. Because as we talk about chapter 5, the authors are trying to push us of saying, okay, how do we take a neighbor who may be considered a stranger? How do we take them from stranger to acquaintance? And from acquaintance to actually having a relationship. And the first step was this. Okay, how do I take them from stranger to acquaintance? The author said this. Well, that's simple. Learn their names. And if you learn their names, they won't be a stranger any longer. Now, can we be honest real quick? Because it can be so easy to cheat on this step right here. You might cheat by saying, well, I'll give them a nickname. I'll call them big guy, you know, princess, or hopefully you're saying it to the right people, right? But like, how many of you ever gone to church and someone said hi to you and you're like, hey, brother in the Lord, right? I, I, I feel that. I hear you. But the thing is, what the authors are pushing us is, hey, stay away from the nicknames and actually learn their real name. And that's how you can take them from stranger to acquaintance. Now, from acquaintance to relationship is a little bit different because there's no clear step. The authors mentioned several examples of people trying to take this step of acquaintance to relationship. And some of those examples included people throwing block parties in their neighborhood, which is great for them. But the thing is, is that the idea that the authors are really trying to push is your willingness to enter into your neighbor's world. And there's no clear cut way to have that happen. But there are similar ingredients. And here's the ingredients that take a person from acquaintance to relationship. Are you ready for this? It takes humility. To not think of yourself better than the person down the street. Or think of yourself better than the person that you interact with on a daily basis. But to actually care about that person. What they have to say. Hear their story. And care for them. It takes intentionality. As we talked about last week. About taking out time suckers. Right? I'm not going to doom scroll. I'm not going to waste my time on other things. I'm going to prioritize my time here. And it takes intentionality. And lastly, it it takes obedience to take that step of faith to build that friendship. Now, this is where chapter 6 fits in perfectly because the focus of this chapter focuses on taking baby steps. It's about taking your time. Now, men are stereotypically known as, I'll fix it. Like, let's let's just get it done. No. To build a relationship is going to take some time to cook. It's going to take some time to plan, strategize, and build. It's going to take time. And so this is what I want to do, especially with chapter 6, as we talk about taking baby steps. We want to take away all the pressure. Don't feel pressure right now to learn everybody's name today, right now, to learn everybody's story right now. No, take away that pressure. Take away the pressure from the idea that you have to be everyone's best friend. You don't, that's not the ask. That's not the expectation. You don't want to force relationships. Number one, that's awkward, right? And number two, that's not how true, real relationships work. Look at this quote. 
the author said this, remember, relationships don't have to happen when we heap pressure on ourselves and others. So don't try too hard. This can happen more easily than you anticipate because this is how God designed you to live. You were built to connect with other people. So be who you are and relationships will grow out of that. It makes friendship normal and natural, something that just happens rather than something being forced. So here are some suggestions that the author said. Hey, if you don't want to force it from taking a person from acquaintance to relationship, just be you. What are you already doing? So if you like the barbecue, hey, number one, invite me over, please. I'd appreciate it. Number two, instead of barbecuing in your backyard where you may not see any neighbors, Put the barbecue in your front yard where you might be able to interact with your neighbor and maybe you guys can grill together, et cetera. Or maybe you can bake cookies. All right, once again, please invite me if you need a taste tester. Hey, I, I, for Jesus, I'll do it for you. But bake cookies and, and send it to your neighbor. If you love doing those things, go ahead and already do it. Here's some other suggestions. Playing sports. Maybe you have kids that are in the same league. That's a great way to build a relationship. Or maybe you are going to watch the World Series or the Super Bowl or something like that. Open up your home and invite your neighbors in. Because, hey, you're going to watch the game anyways, right? Hey, let's do it together. Now, one thing that I really want to hit on right here is not only are we trying to be obedient unto the Lord, but, man, there is a big need out there. Because there's a need by so many Americans that are not voiced. You see, there was a poll that was taken by usnews.com in 2024. And the poll concluded this, that 1 in 10 adults feel lonely every day. And that's an estimated 34 million people right now. Now you might be saying, okay, well, feeling lonely, is what's the big deal? Well, according to the CDC... What happens from feeling lonely is this. Loneliness has been linked to increase of risk of heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, depression, anxiety, addiction, dementia, and early death, according to the U.S. Centers of Disease and Control and Prevention. Look at what the authors are saying to this. Relationships are more effective than programs because they are organic and ongoing. The idea is that when neighbors are in relationship with one another, the elderly shut-in gets cared for by the person next door. The at-risk kid gets mentored by a dad who lives in the block and so on. To love where you live and to love your neighbor as you love yourself is not something meant to make you feel like, I'm guilt into loving them. I'm guilted into caring for them. No, but to live it out is an act of obedience unto God that may save a life. Not only that, but it may have an impact on a person's eternity. So it isn't as hard as we want to try to make it. Like you don't have to force it. You don't have to fix it all right now, right? It's not as easy as putting a Christian sticker on your uh, on your car or putting a you know, a picket thing on your on your yard or whatever. It's not that easy and it's not about you closing yourself off to the world but look at this quote it says this it's simple just share what you love to do make small steps give the little you have and watch God do a miracle I hope this lesson challenges you number one to take that step of faith that is an act of worship unto God And to have the bigger vision of why. Not only are you making God pleased, but you're impacting people's lives here on earth and possibly for eternity. You were made for a purpose. You live where you live for a reason. To love where you live. To shine for Jesus. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time and for the reminder, God, of the reason why we are here. We're not here by accident, but we're here on a purpose and on a mission, Father. So, Lord, I ask you that you would bless our time of discussions, Lord. Allow us to wrestle with this material, but ultimately, Lord, allow us, Lord, to take it and to live it out. 
Bless us with opportunities to learn our neighbors' names, to take baby steps, and to invite others, Lord, into a life that is focused onto you. In Jesus' name, amen.